The following podcast is a Next Level production. It sounds like Christmas is a wonderful time, and Yonder ruined it for Peter. I feel like I should do something. Why? Because of, you know, my secret. The one only you know. That you ate the entire bowl of Zargnuts in the commissary? My other secret. That you're Quill's sister? Why don't you just tell people the truth? Peter's father, our father, killed his mother and tried to kill him. I don't want him to be reminded of that every time he sees me. No, I meant about the Zargnuts. Oh, I don't think anyone cares about that but you. Maybe because I'm his sister, I feel like I should give Peter a happy Christmas. He's so sad about Gamora being gone. Maybe if we gave Peter a really wonderful Christmas gift, it would make him happy. Well, we could give him those Zargnuts. Except you ate them all. Get over the Zargnuts! Hey, pal lovers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. I'm Rob. And I'm Greg. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special on Disney Plus, which is a Disney Plus special, which kind of harkens back to the ABC specials that we used to get. Yeah, like the after school specials or a special presentation? Holiday specials. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, Rob and I actually covered Werewolf by Night, which was literally almost like that, got that whole special glossed or segued kind of special imaging. I, I wish they just called it the the Marvel Halloween special just because it wouldn't have given away exactly what it was. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I know it, it's one of those weird things, but I, I think they, they decided to do the whole uh, ABC special and do that. Tick, 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 and very re- yeah, that. it's a, it's a very retro uh, bumper in, in the, uh, on that section, I when I saw it, I was like, "Wow, that takes me back to the seventies, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, and eighties too." <laughs> at that time, yeah, yeah, we we all come from that, you know. You and I, Rob, come from that seventies <laughs> and eighties. We know that because oh, boy, it's yeah. grilled in our heads. <laughs> uh, Greg's a little bit younger than us, but he still remembers that yeah, too. I, remember, I mean, the specials in the eighties. I mean, yeah, uh, you got the uh, what the Endor stuff that we got back in the 80s too yes <laughs> yep yeah so uh yeah and, and we was simulcasted on radio <laughs> so we don't even get that with this which is funny but uh yeah well, well we're talking about the uh guardians of the galaxy holiday special that was out on disney plus it's a holiday special so it's all about pretty much Christmas, everybody. Honestly, it's a holiday special, but obviously it's focusing on Christmas. But, all right, which one of you want to do the synopsis for this particular episode? I mean, it's literally liter- literally a line, so I'll, I'll do it. Okay, cool. To make Christmas special for Quill, the Guardians head to Earth in search of the perfect present. Yeah, very much. That was taken straight from Disney Plus. <laughs> Good, which is great, which is fantastic. It gives zero context of well, it gives you a small bit of context and just enough to make you go, okay, I understand what's happening. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And and the fact that it's like a, just a basic synopsis, but the thing is is that we learn as we go. We learn a lot of things that we didn't know before from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as well within the episode itself of exactly. what they're going to do. So we only got teased a little bit with uh, kind of teaser trailers, but nonetheless, we get a great episode, in my opinion. So with that, we're, we're going to just move right along into initial thoughts. So, uh, Greg, you give us your first thoughts. So, I mean, I, it was obviously great to be back in with this group of characters again, Mm -hmm. but Drax is basically my least favorite MCU character, (laughs) but he, he also really, they basically give him a bunch of really good lines to make up for the fact that he's just a crap character. Mm. I kind of like the Drax from the comic books a little bit better. 
uh, not a little bit. I like him a lot better. He's not, I, I don't think he's a, a full meal, but, uh, but I, I think his, his interactions in the comic book are less goofy and silly, uh, and closer to some of like his, his backstory in the first guardians movie. Uh, mm. but yeah, so like I said, he got, he got good lines. Uh, it turned into a, a buddy, you know, buddy movie between, uh, Mantis and, uh, and Drax, which was okay. I, I really enjoyed basically what ended up being cameos of the rest of the guardians. Um, although I did kind of appreciate when, when Peter started to take a little bit more of the focus a little bit later on in the episode. Hmm. Uh, overall I, it was it was a fun time um it was but it but it basically there's so many characters that you only got a little bit with a few of them but i i gained a much bigger appreciation for mantis in this in this special yeah they did promote a lot more of mantis as far as a character she definitely has moved forward as far as a a character with her development within the mcu in this particular episode, and I'll I'll bring that up later on. But Rob, yeah, your thoughts. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to say that this has been a crazy phase four for the MCU. <laughs> um, and you would think, hey, you know, these big tentpole movies are gonna actually be, you know, phenomenal and stuff like that, because that's what we always expected out of the MCU. But yeah. This has, I, I get you and I have talked about how, you know, how different this has been. And it's amazing that this one hour special is probably the best part of this entire year's MCU property. Yes. It had so much heart. It had the whole, you know, James Gunn feel to it. James Gunn just knows these characters and knows how to make them fun. Right. I like the fact that I got to visit this world again. It's like we left it off in good hands, you know, and then when we come back to it, it's still, you know, in good hands, that kind of, you know, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, no, I, I loved it. I thought it was great. And, you know, we'll talk about uh, all the uh, all the crazy stuff in the uh, in the episode. But yeah, very well. I thought it was very well written. And for two characters that are usually always background characters, because let's face it, Mantis and uh, and Drax have always been the, those background characters, you know, I think. Hmm. Not there, they don't feel you know, you got Quill, you got you know, Gamora, you got uh, uh, Rocket, which usually are front and center, mm -hmm. and then you have Groot behind that, and then from that, you have Drax and Mantis, <laughs> you know. And so, it was nice to bring them forward and just kind of you know, give them that spotlight. And mm -hmm. I think they, I think they were just such a great duo together, so yeah, it does make me wonder about. And I know we saw a little bit of it in Guardians 2 and Infinity War, or maybe it was Endgame, but like their chemistry is pretty decent. Yes. Yeah, it, and, and seeing more of that and seeing what, you know, potentially what they have developed into as far as like a, a, a perfect strangers or odd couple grouping mm -hmm. is, is, is a lot of fun. Yeah. Which leads me to mine, which. Honestly, uh, I thought this was very much Dr Drax and Mantis centric to do something for Quill, which uh, literally is what we get within the particular uh, the special. But the thing is, we get two other people, or if not three other people that stand out that were always secondary or third party characters. We got Cosmo. We got uh, Nebula. We have sean gunn's character craglin yeah and they are standout characters and there's a lot of things that i love about this because they could have added a fourth they could have gave us howard the duck where was howard howard was on nowhere where was he well there's only so much they could pay uh, the I know, <laughs> yeah, you, they, they would have to pay Seth Green, and they would actually have to do so much more. Right. But honestly, uh, I really did enjoy the episode. It gave me the vibes of a Star Wars holiday special that, you know, Rob, you and I probably saw when we were kids back in 1978. Oh and due to rotoscoping, they were able to do the whole... That whole thing with Craglin, Quill, 
Yandu. Yandu together. That was actually filmed and they rotoscoped it digitally. Right. And they put that within the special itself because James Gunn stated flat out he wanted this to be better than the Star Wars Holiday Edition <laughs> that we got back in 1978. I mean, it wouldn't take much. It wouldn't take much, exactly. <laughs> we we don't have Wookiees looking at, like, dancing people, getting aroused, or uh, all these weird things that happen within it, but... Mind you, uh, you could still find that particular Star, you know, Star Wars special edition on holiday, spe- you know, holiday edition or Star Wars holiday special on YouTube. Yeah, you could still find it, and you could watch it free. And it's something that <laughs> it's horrible. I mean, when you look at that, it is just absolutely horrible. It is but, so dated. Yeah, that's it. But that's what James Gunn said. He said, you know, he got the idea from that. And the anima- animated part in the beginning, yeah. he did it because the Star Wars Holiday Special had some cool animated segments, and he uh, and he yeah. liked that, so that's why he did that, which I thought was cool. At first, it kind of at first it threw me. I'll be up uh, very honest with you. Yeah, I was no, like, it definitely. I was just like, oh man, this crappy animation again. I, I mean, you, you know, at this point, you're like, okay, well, they have to be doing this on purpose. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. It kind of rounded it out, if you think about it. If you l- watch the episode as a whole in comparison to the Star Wars Holiday Special Edition that they had back in 78, it kind of rounded everything out w- between the cartoon with Yondu, Craglin, and Quill all the way to the very end. And it works out in the sense that it works out the whole story from beginning to end. Oh, Absolutely. Whereas with the holiday special edition that they had for Star Wars was very much completely different. No, I know. It's just, I think it's just James Gunn. I remember just saying that, you know, he, he enjoyed that segment of it. So that's why he just threw an animated part in there. And he yeah. just figured, you know what? And since we're just kind of paying a uh, homage to uh, the, you know, Star Wars holiday special, why not rotoscope it or something like that to make it look like the, uh, what yeah. is it like? Um, uh, Heavy metal. Oh, right. yeah. Heavy metal. You know, even still, yeah. Heavy metal, uh, Fire and Ice, uh, Lord of the Rings that came out too. Rob, oh, you yeah. and I both know that. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you, you, you had somebody there who is uh, pretty much very much important to that particular uh, movie as well. Right. Who was in the original Alien, John Hurt. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, they, they had pride stuff, but they did something in a sense that reflected history, but put it in the present and made it work in a sense within its own, I would say its own canon and its own realm for the fact that, you know, it's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So we got Yondu back, we got Kraglin, we got Young Quill, and the kid who actually played Young Quill within that particular scene was the original kid from the original first movie, oh, was Guardians it? of the Galaxy. That's actually very cool. Again, those are the little details that I think that James Gunn is very good at. Yeah. And since he loves these characters and, of course, you know, it reflects on the work he's done so far, I wish other um, directors can take, you know, a lot of that into yeah. the work they do. And that doesn't seem to be the case in Phase 4. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> all right well with that we'll we'll move right along into our, our top five highlights or our highlights of the particular episode or the the special edition as it were and uh we'll move right along and go right into with uh greg what was your first highlight that you loved about this episode well, so start right at the beginning the uh the idea uh, that, you know, hey, this person passed on to this person, you know, Craglin, you taught Craglin, and Craglin taught Cosmo, and Co- Cosmo taught Rocket, and Rocket taught all of these people about the, you know, the, I'm just going to call them the, the odd ceremonies of humanity. So what do we believe happens, or what is, you know, the lore that happens is that we have this this man who has elves, this man with flying reindeer and a sleigh who has elves that make toys all year long. 
<laughs> you know, then on one day, he basically hyperspaces around Earth yeah. and breaks into everyone's house and leaves things for them with with no context from an alien point of view i can i can see how they they might get a little bit confused <laughs> the uh and yeah I, and I just started thinking about other things that that we do as humans all right so when when people die you know when yondu died they sent him off into space with an honor guard of you know rockets yeah. and and all that mm -hmm. um but on earth what do we do we put them in a box and we bury them underground. We don't return them to, uh, you know, to, they don't, they don't go into the, into the ground in order to feed back to life. We don't feed the circle of life. No, no, we isolate them and then we put them underground and we bury them in dirt. Um, <laughs> and so wait, you do what? Like, Oh, well, Oh no. Well, sometimes we just burn them until nothing's left. What? Like I could, I can see that confusion. What do you, and I mean, I'm not trying to, not trying to start a, a holy war or anything, but I mean, oh, so what do you, why are you, why are you in this, this room of, why are you in this, this, what do you call it? A church? Yeah. Oh, we're worshiping God. Well, who's God? Oh, God's the giant man in the sky. Galactus? No, 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 no. Bigger ego. than Galactus. It's ego. It's ego. Well, no, no God. No, you mean what do you mean the celestials is that who you're talking about no no god like he's an invisible man in the sky no. who knows everything and, uh, and then we, <laughs> we, we, we like pray to him do you sacrifice things no we don't sacrifice things i mean i guess we we did at one point but now that's just like uncouth i mean there are just so many things like that, that we do that i could totally see being weird weirdly interpreted by by other other you know by alien life forms or alien cultures and civilizations and i i i liked the idea that uh i liked the the take on santa i thought it was a lot of fun all right all right to tap off of that all right we already watched the whole episode through the whole holiday special all right what do we do at christmas we cut down trees we decorate them we put them on there. Who's in the Guardians that's a tree? <laughs> well, you know, if you watch the end of a... At the of very the end, end of the they dress screwed up! <laughs> How is he not fearful looking into this tradition? <laughs> oh my god, they cut me at the roots? And they dangle things and put bling on me? They cut down my cousins and... Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. What, what, what are the we doing? hell? Well, yeah. the different the difference would be that is that Groot can actually walk from one one part to the other. <laughs> right. The trees can't, so they got to be cut down. So I'm sure he's happy about that. <laughs> so you're freeing my brethren. Okay, we'll look at, look at it that way. And putting and, bling on them. And then like, we're oh, if oh, they're and, they're Kardashian or and then Kardashian, we, we, we sorry, them not for Kardashian. A month, and then they die, and yeah. then all of their leaves fall off. <laughs> or pines fall, pine needles fall off, and then we throw them out by the the. We put them into a dump. Where they yeah, can basically, we cut them down. We dress them up. We mock them as they're slowly dying, and then we throw them away. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't see what the you know I don't see what the problem here is, guys. <laughs> Groot would. <laughs> oh, Groot needs to get over it. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Rob, was, what what was, what was your uh, your next one? <laughs> My next one was actually honestly the biggest thing. One of the, like the top, you know, uh, one of the biggest highlights was, and you know, again, spoilers for those who have not seen it. <laughs> okay, uh, Mantis being Quill's sister. I mean, that was yeah, pretty epic there. And um, I don't know, that was just such a really like that that little part when uh, she tells him at the end. That was such a touching scene. That was so well done, and mm -hmm. it's what. That that was the part where when I saw that I was like you know that's that's the heart of what like MCU knows how to do yeah really well when they do it they do it really really well and you know and James Gunn got it I mean he that was just such such a great little scene 
but yeah, no, you know, now, now, I can, now I'm just wondering how that plays into the movie Volume Three, which is coming mm-hmm. out. And as a matter of yeah. fact, I don't know if you guys seen the uh, the trailer. Have you for Volume I, Three? Yes, I have, yeah, I have yeah. actively not watched it. Yeah, I, because, uh, yeah, I, I have. And th- that'll be it. news at the very end, but. Uh, but it was great the fact that I mean and hope yeah I mean this has to be this has to t- be taking place before volume right. three and that's the one oh, thing is. that I'm wondering yeah so that part was phenomenal I I, I liked it I, there was a lot of heart to it and I'm glad that they made Mantis uh more uh, of a um family cent- central character more you know look look into her more and you yeah. know who she is she was. Uh, she, she was played very cute by uh, I forgot the uh, the Palm Clentyf something like yeah. that yeah yeah uh, Palm right. Clentyf yep uh, so well done with that and so I just when, when she first came out in uh, what was it in Volume Two yeah. yeah she was very cute you know and very different from what the uh, comic book you know Mantis is but mm-hmm. what I liked also about it was that they show her fighting. Mm-hmm. Which she's supposed to be a martial arts, you know, master or something like that, you know, according to the MCU uh, universe. Mm-hmm. So they showed that part of it. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So, but yeah, so I, that's what I like. I like the fact that, you know, they show that part for Mantis and uh, and Quill, and the you know the reveal of that was very well done. I do wish that they had saved that reveal until that last part at the end. At the end, it because, would have made because, more sense. At, yeah. Because at the, be- at the beginning, when it was a throwaway line by Drax, oh, that you're Quill's sister? And she's like, mm-hmm. I mean, like, if they just left it with, you know, the secret that only you know, and then you found out that later, I think that would have hit me harder yes. um, than than the way that it did. I was like, at that point, I was just like, wait, what? I mean, <laughs> I guess it does make sense that, you know, Ego was off planting his seed everywhere, and uh, <laughs> um, and you know she was one of them. Uh, she had a power, so he didn't kill her, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I was just I, I I did think it was oddly just kind of off the cuff, like throw almost a throwaway line of this huge reveal. Yeah. Um, and that, but if they'd saved if they'd saved that for the end, I'd have been like, oh my god, that's that's crazy, that's awesome. I mean, horrible, but awesome. <laughs> yeah, right. What do you got, uh, Mark? Uh, literally, uh, I I just love the whole the fact that how Mantis actually entraps Drax into this, bringing up the whole oh the Zargat knots. Oh, you ate them all. No, not that secret. The other secret. Oh, that your Quill's sister. Yeah, and that the way it leads into it, but. And the fact that Drax can't really let it go. The Zarknuts. <laughs> Zarknuts. That was yeah. so funny. You ate all the Zarknuts. No! It's like, <laughs> the fact that she wants to do something good by her brother that she has never really shown or, like, even stated to him that they are siblings. Right. And and because of the fear that it's a relation to Ego, which created both of them, and the fact that she was there all along with Ego. And then she goes into this idea of, okay, let's give him a gift for Christmas, which is literally a person. You know, let, let's get Kevin Bacon. <laughs> and of all things, and it's because, you know, he mentioned, as, as far as us as the viewers only know, We've only heard about him in, uh, I'm forgetting, what was it? Was it uh, Infinity Wars or Guardians of the Galaxy? I'm forgetting which movie it was. But he sta- you know, he basically states, you know, it's like, oh, he was footloose. It's like, he's part, oh, it had to be Infinity War. He goes, one. yeah. So, and then he says it to Thor. And he goes, uh, he might be part of the Avengers. I'm not sure. I haven't been there in some time. And oh yeah, no, yeah, no, I know you're talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was in, that was in Infinity War. Yeah. So uh, and that's where it came out. Where he actually brings it up to the group. So he must have mentioned Kevin Bacon at some point. And as far as we know, within Guardians of the Galaxy Part Two with David Hasselhoff, Hasselhoff does a 
kind of a musical at the very end. Oh, that song is one of my favorites from that soundtrack. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's a phenomenal soundtrack, but it is my favorite original to the, the soundtrack. Exactly. Yeah. And and with this, this per- particular episode or this special, we get a song by Kevin Bacon and him singing, too, <laughs> with some of the guys that were uh, in the actual in the actual special itself, which were, uh, I'm trying to remember. The old 97s. The old 97s, yeah. So, uh, to me, that was amazing in itself for the fact that you got somebody else there who's a legendary person that he mentions. You know, he mentioned David Hasselhoff and the talking car, saying that was his father, but it wasn't his father. It was originally Ego. Now we got Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon comes into this special. He actually right. does sing with the old 97s, which is an alien band, which honestly, my favorite song within the show was the first one. Yes. And it's constantly of Quill going, no, no, that's not how it is. No. <laughs> and it's amazing. I love that song. That has to be on some sort of soundtrack. I have to listen to that oh, all I'm the sure time. That, I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they'll come out with the soundtrack for that. Yeah. I, that was also one of my top five highlights. So it's the uh, that first musical number. I was like, okay. that, <laughs> that has to be one of those things where from now on it'll just they'll play it on the in the radio from this point on. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so and, and the, the, as weird as it is, and we could talk about every little instance because. Within the Marvel, uh, like the comic universe, Santa is actually known as one of a Nexus mutants or Nexus beings <laughs> that is out there, too, by the way. Listeners, yes. Is it really? <laughs> yes, he is. Santa is part of a Nexus universe. He is a Nexus being. So he is a mutant to some degree for the fact that he could teleport. He could actually stop time so he could get the gifts going he can manipulate reindeer he could do all this this is all within the comics this is canon to it's the canon comics people. <laughs> by the way on, on spotify i just looked and they do have the entire uh soundtrack for uh, the holiday special so and that's- well, all right, cool. when, you're, when you're looking on that what's the opening song who is the the not the not the opening song number but the opening song during the credits. Uh, let me see. Uh, so I'm I'm kind of reading off the actual list of songs they have in this. The mm-hmm. first one is I don't know what Christmas is, of course, by the old ninety seven. But then this, how Yandu ruined Christmas by John Murphy, telekinesis. So I'm not sure if there's a if it's oh, that, that might be a score or portions right. of that being this, a score. But yeah, I think I think yes. Yeah. So let me see. It was almost like a Sid Vicious style or like uh, Sid Vicious or uh, hmm. like not Bruce Springsteen. Who's the the guy that just basically just talks. Right. Not John Lennon. You guys help me out. Is it? He, <laughs> I'm Bruce? not even sure. No, it's the, he's like a poet. He didn't, oh, Bob you Dylan. didn't know Bob it? Dylan. Uh, yeah, I was just <laughs> very, very Bob Dylan-ish uh, lyrics. And that opening song, it's just like, it, and it almost sounds like they're drunk. Oh, okay. And I was just like, what? What is this? And I, I, I wanted to look it up. It could be. I mean, um, I mean, on the on that soundtrack, I just saw the characters that are singing or anything like that. It's in the beginning and the end with uh, Kevin Bacon and it's the old ninety seven. But what you're talking about, yes, it, it did have a very Bob Dylan type of sound. Hmm. I was just curious. I'll have to take take a look at that. Yeah, Sorry, I'm actually I don't know where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm actually looking at the uh, in uh, the wiki for it, and it doesn't mention anything about it. Okay, hmm. I'm gonna have to do a little more deep diving in that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of deep diving. All right, on to the next one, Greg. I kind of mentioned it already, but like Drax is just a, a horrible. I'm not gonna say human, but a horrible <laughs> being. Being. Like it, he's very self-centered. Uh, he, he thinks about himself and his yeah, own just, self-pleasures. He wants that particular elf, that that blow-up elf that uh, the, the, Kevin Bacon had. Do you want? Do you want the little man, or do you want the little man? <laughs> just, 
Um, and they, oh, it, it tickles. I'm going to pee my pants. Um, like, oh, oh, with the bullets. Yeah. yeah. He's being yeah. shot at. And then he's like, <laughs> well, like, I mean, and I get where this is kind of quotes, but this is just demonstrating what a horrible being Drax is. You can't just kill people, Drax. Well, if how do I know what the rules are if no one tells me? I mean, <laughs> come on, man. Like, it's not like you have zero memory. Like, Peter's talked about not killing people. It's it's a thing. Like, okay, yeah, Gamora yeah. kills people, Nebula kills people, but you don't just kill people because they're there. And he's like, he's so. I laugh at him. He's kind of like Peter Griffin, mm-hmm. um, where I laugh at him. Because he's just a horrible person. And I like I don't necessarily like I do think that I like I, I don't think that he has been as bad as this and by as bad just like he hasn't rubbed me this poorly in the past because mm-hmm. we haven't seen him nearly as much. No. But again, I did really enjoy like him playing the or uh, Mantis playing the straight man, straight being to uh to to drax was was fun but yeah drax is just he just he just rose me the wrong way although so again, basically good, good drax lines. is the abbot to well oh, no no uh mantis is the abbot to drax's castello basically yeah okay yes. uh, all right yeah she's she's the she's the the one's like yeah duh like this doesn't look like a little man does it <laughs> no, my friend's just being an idiot. <laughs> like, yeah, that was an exactly. awesome, awesome line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, I, I already kind of bitched about Drax a little bit, so I'm I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was that was my next point. Yeah, Drax is. Yeah, it's like you said, Drax is just one of those characters. When you just said um, that he reminds you of uh, of uh, who is it from a uh, Family Guy? Um, Peter Griffin. Peter Griffin. Peter Griffin. <laughs> Yeah, and it just it it clicked on me. I was like, "Oh my god, you're right. He is basically a, <laughs> a, a alien version of Peter Griffin." That's yeah, exactly he, what he, he just he he does the things that like a really horrible person would do, right? And you laugh at him because he's not real. And but if that was somebody that you knew, you'd be like, "What the hell is wrong with you?" And he's not even aware of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> reminds me of people at work. Right. Yes, <laughs> yes, Rob. We it reminds of people we work with. Yes, okay. Oh uh, <laughs> man. So uh, I'm gonna also, you know, he, Mantis can stick up uh, to walls. That's the one highlight that I saw when uh, they were chasing yeah. uh, Kevin Bacon. All of a sudden, I saw her doing the kind of a Spider Man thing, and I was like, "Wait, that's a thing now." <laughs> no, it's been a thing in the comics because Mantis was in the comics. Right. It's just that we have not gotten that. Right. The right. only thing that we came close to that was during the Infinity Wars as well as Endgame, mostly Endgame, in a sense that she was part of the uh, the girl brigade or woman brigade, as I should say, yeah. for the fact that they were taking over and taking within like uh, it's woman power at that point. So you had her with pepper pots. You had her with uh, what was it? Uh, wasp. Yeah, all, all the all the all, all the, all the, all the women. female leads and stuff. Exactly. Like that from the MCU, so yeah. she showed her powers within Endgame. But the thing is, this was more prominent because it kind of debuted it with her own, in a right. sense that she could do all these things. She was able to now, mind you, it kind of looked too CG'd at certain points. It did, <laughs> but it, it, to me, it was like okay, it's kind of Spider Man ish because she is kind of a bug herself in the response to like kind of like right. Spider Man. You know, she's got the antennae and she is more buggish. So in this case, when she was chasing after Kevin Bacon, she was portraying her particular powers that we really didn't see present within Guardians past or within like let's say Endgame. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, as as goofy as it was and how CG as it was, I really did enjoy that. Well yeah, it was just uh like I said, it was just since we haven't seen I mean we saw her a little bit in action, I would say in, you know, yeah. Infinity War, but 
seeing her in action here was actually uh, really cool. So, but yeah, that one really stuck to me. It's like, oh, she could stick to walls like Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't really quite understand that. So she could. She couldn't jump over the fence, but then when they're chasing Kevin Bacon, both her and Drax are like jumping thirty feet in the air. Exactly, over right? Fences. Well, I'm if, like, if, if you Drax look, is throwing her, and then, maybe yes. Drax is throwing her over and the bushes, and I think that's what it was because all she did was say, "Is like, how do we get over the fence?" I'm sure she would say, "Oh, wait, we jump." But could he, you, she didn't even. Me up there? <laughs> <laughs> what are you yeah. doing? I wasn't even done talking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'm sure she would be like, wait, I could have done this myself, but you know. <laughs> well, the funniest too, and the coolest thing too about both of them, after they get into Kevin Bacon's house and they're chasing him, he jumps onto the tree, falls down. They jump from the second story and do superhero landings just the same. Right. And I exactly. thought that was fun too. <laughs> <laughs> they did do the cutaway where they. You know, they show them landing. It was like they yeah. jump off the thing and then they, they show them landing. I was like, oh, this is like watching She Hulk where they don't ever show her <laughs> all, you know, fully, you know, shrink down. Right. Are we going into that, Greg? Come on. <laughs> We've got to suspend our disbelief and love the show as it is. Do I have to call Penny in? <laughs> she, she understands. Okay. So she's cheaper that way. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I, I, by the way, I found I found all the music that was yeah. featured in here. So it is in Wikipedia. So if you look down, I mean, there's stuff by Smashing Pumpkins, and you know, yes, I, I did I recognize the, yeah. the, the Smashing Pumpkins one. It was Same Fairy here. Tale for, of New York by the Pogues. Kirsty McCall is the, oh, the one that yeah. I was thinking of. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, so we, we yeah, just had to uh, say that because I found <laughs> it. I was like, all right, I found yeah. it. <laughs> all right. Anyway. Next up, uh, who's Is next? That you? I think it's you. Me? Well, uh, I'm going to pull away from what uh, Rob has already probably put in his notes, but I already know uh, the Guardians own Nowhere. They bought it from the yes. Collector. <laughs> I thought the Collector was dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so did, he, did the Collector get snapped? I think so. I mean, I or just don't know. He, because, I, because I between, thought, between I thought Thanos had and... killed him. In the original series, they never yeah. showed him. They should never showed him getting. Snapped. They never showed him death. Well, no. so they showed they showed Thanos with the collector, but it was with the Reality Stone. Yes, that right. he was showing that the collector was under his boot or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I imagine he had him stocked away somewhere mm -hmm. or something, and then or I, put in a, a chamber. Yeah, I probably. Don't, I, I, I don't know where he ended up. I thought that the collection all got exploded, but. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's kind of strange because uh, that actor has never come back. So I'm, yeah, yes. I'm curious as as oh, you if, mean after Infinity or after, after yeah. yeah after Infinity War. Yeah, and we've never seen him come back. So except uh, in what if? Yeah, and my my attitude is like, okay, uh, we'll take it as is because this is canon now. So where, where did they get the money for that? <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not DC well, money. Remember, they 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 do a lot of uh, they do a lot of bounty hunter work. So they do, I mean, but they got snapped out like for five years. I mean, mm -hmm. did they did they get a reward for? Uh, I don't know. Not, yeah, anything? not sure. Yeah, not sure. I mean, that's a that's a good question because that's I, I thought the same thing. I was like, wait a minute. I mean, I guess Rocket yep. Nebula could have been stealing things for a long time. Especially Rocket, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, who knows how uh, how that happened? It might be interesting because I think that might actually be a uh, a topic in uh, yeah in volume, volume three in, vo in volume three. So that would be very interesting to know. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything else about that, Mark? No, in the sense that I'm just taking it as fact from what we got <laughs> from the special edition. So you know. Uh, we have to take things as they come sometimes because we don't know because there's various writers. We don't know what's going to happen on Guardians of the Galaxy Part 3. Right. We do have a little bit of knowledge, but we'll talk well, about that. But we also have Peter Gunn at the helm. So James like, Gunn. I, sorry, James Gunn. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, not Peter Gunn. Uh, so... <laughs> 
So we do have James Gunn at the helm again. So mm -hmm. I think we can trust him to, yeah. to to be able to fill some of those those blanks. The great thing about it is that I think he's going to close this out, you know, because that's going to be his own trilogy. Right. Uh, including this, uh, you know, and also this uh, holiday special. But yeah, I think he's going to close out this trilogy uh, very well. You think he'll come back for next year's holiday special? <laughs> I don't know. That's uh, that all depends on how much he's doing on DC. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, now that's, that he's a now that he's the Kevin ba uh, Kevin Feige of uh, yeah, yeah of DC, DC. I mean, yeah, he's probably going to be uh, stressed out very thin. Yeah, I would say James Gunn is going to be the Kevin Feige of DC at this point, and uh, yeah, but that's a good thing. I mean, at least we got somebody that. It is a fan of these properties and it's a fan of, you know, comic books. And right. he, he, yeah. he will, I think, in my opinion, just respect the IP pretty well. Yeah. So hopefully it's not like other directors, you know, in this last phase. <laughs> so. <laughs> I haven't really had any issues with the last phase. I mean, I've also... The Eternals, I'm, man. The Eternals. Come on. So I, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have like I, I, like I, I feel like they just tried to do too much with the Eternals. Um, speaking of the Eternals, did you guys see Kingo on the 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 billboard in there? Yes, yes. They uh, mm, they I was made like, whoa! It. I, I missed that the first time I watched it. Yeah, they they kind of. I was always hoping that the whole Eternals thing was like another universe. <laughs> you know, like like Kevin no. will go. You know what? This is pretty horrible. Let's make believe that that took place in another no, universe. No, but then, no. like, you know, you see Kingo here, and you're like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're stuck with it. Yeah, so it sucks. But <laughs> I haven't. I mean, I didn't have any knowledge, previous knowledge of the Eternals. So I was kind of like, I mean, I also am not super negative about literally anything except for maybe Drax. <laughs> so like i hey this is the story you want to tell okay yeah uh, it wasn't it wasn't the most engaging thing out there but i mean you know some things made sense some things you go wait why didn't they didn't just do, do this you know what whatever okay that's fine <laughs> that's that's a choice and uh my problem with it was that you know if they were going to do the eternals on what was it thor ragnarok and yeah, and actually, in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, they made the Eternals look like the Jack Kirby creation. You okay. know, yes. so it had that very yeah. you know Jack Kirby look. And in the Eternals, they went ahead and they changed it completely. Yeah, they that made was my, it. Yeah, that was, you and yeah, I that was spoke my, about this. Yeah, yeah that it, was my problem with that because you were promised one thing and then. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like the head. director just said, you know what, I, I kind of like this direction, and I think. Kevin Feige was like, no, 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 it has to look like this. All right. Gotcha. So you could do whatever, but it has to look like this. And I think that was my big problem with that. It's just like, this is not what. Yeah. And then you see in this particular, at the very end, the very beginning, at the very end, too, nowhere the face of that celestial is very different. Right. Yeah. And to me, I'm like, okay, they're trying to make this canon, but we already have. Like you already stated, what was it? Uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy 1, mm -hmm. we get a vision of the Celestial with one of the uh, Infinity Stones. A very much comic representative of uh, Jack Kirby. Correct. And then... Um, Same thing in uh, Thor Love and Thunder? When yes. they were in, uh, what was it, uh, uh, God City or whatever? <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, where Zeus was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You see the guard. You see the uh, you see the celestials in the back. The celestials are there, and yeah. they're like kind of making pa way past when the goats kind of run Correct. through the window. But they look yeah. exactly like you know they do in like Jack they, Kirby. But, yeah, but then all of a sudden they change it. And what really what really gets to me is that so the new uh, the well it just passed, but the new story about the X Men uh, is called X. So it's the X-Men, the Avengers, and the Eternals. Mm -hmm. And the Eternals are starting, they're starting to draw them a little bit mm -hmm. like the ones from the movie. And I was like, oh, you guys are giving in. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it's that was really interesting that they're trying to make that canon also in the comic book. Yeah. But that being said, going back to, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, 
Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, one of the one of the big highlights that made me laugh out loud was just seeing Nova dancing, but she does it like with such an angry Nebula. face. Nebula, I'm sorry, Nebula, not Nova. Nebula with such an angry face when they were like all you know around you know looking at Kevin Bacon uh, singing. She's yeah. dancing, but she has this angry face, and it just made me laugh. And I'm like. How does a person so angry? Very get? jerky mo- motion. Yeah, that was, it was funny. <laughs> well, she's trying to show her human side, even though she's not human. Right. And I, I think that's what Karen Gellin was trying to portray. Now, mind you, maybe she's trying to uh, focus in her Doctor Who companion that she played with... Uh, <laughs> Matt Smith back in a day to give her a little bit of emotion, yeah, right? Uh, not to uh, do a wibbly wobbly timey wimey thing, but you know it'd be awesome to uh, you know have Doctor Who encountered within it in the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe. But you know, Karen, I think really wanted to animate and give this character more personality. Or try to develop to be a personality, which I think she did literally from Infinity War on. Right. She's been with humans. She lived with Tony Stark in space and learned to be human and then learned to be human over the course of like almost five years with everybody else at, at Stark Space, which was uh, Avengers camp or uh, yeah, whatever it was. compound or whatever they call it. Yeah, yeah. So she learned to develop those patterns of being and being a person, not a half-breed. Because, you know, she got Rhodey to lean on because Rhodey himself was half-cyborg. So he was half-human, so it gave her a sense of somebody to relate to. Right. Now, she's starting to feel a little bit more human-esque humanoid and she still has the love for her sister she still has the love for quill rocket of all things drax and everybody else in oh in yeah the i mean she's, the guardians. she's found a family within yeah. you know within the guardians which is what she was missing and yeah and in her trying to uh assimilate kind of like, f- assimilate and fit into them yeah uh, is always a funny thing and you know just the things that she says and and, and throughout like you know uh, Especially what Quill says to him when he goes, go get bacon. And he goes, don't kill him. <laughs> right, And exactly. she screams out, <laughs> I'll get you bacon. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I, I like the, but you know, that's why I mentioned the dancing because it's just her trying to emulate, I guess, what everybody else is doing. And, you know, so it made it funny. Just when I saw it, I just laughed so out loud because I was like, She's an angry dancer. I mean, <laughs> just yeah. that looks. She just that looks pretty good. So. But she's trying. <laughs> Got to give her that credit, though. Yeah, no, I know, I know. <laughs> but yeah, I did enjoy that too, uh, and the fact that we got a little bit more heart from Nebula, which we never got from within the uh, the MCU itself. Right. She's becoming more and more family, but. As we'll talk later within the, uh, for news, we'll talk about the, uh, trailer that we got for Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which will be amazing. And, uh, as well as, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. And mm. as well as Indiana Jones. We got yes. that this week, too. So, that's to tune in later for those of you that are listening, but, uh, we're going to continue forward, too. And next up, as far as highlights, uh, who's next? Uh, there was Craig. Uh, okay, so uh, I, I really enjoyed the whole uh, superhero photo op montage <laughs> outside of Grauman's or whatever it's called now. Grauman's. It's not Grauman's Chinese Theater anymore. It it, Mandarin? It's, I don't know. Whatever it is I, now. I, I, Hollywood Boulevard? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah Hollywood literally, Boulevard. that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, I I really enjoy Steve, <laughs> and she tries to hug him, yeah, and the and guy, the actor, runs takes off. off. Oh, uh, yeah. poor guy, man. <laughs> um, the, like I I thought that you know that 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 whole scene was a lot. And did the first time I thought 
and maybe it was just something else that I watched, but mm-hmm. I thought that when someone took a picture of Drax, they said, I just got a photo with the God of War. Yes. And, yes. And yes, I they didn't, did. And I, when I was watching it earlier tonight, again, I mm-hmm. didn't, I was listening for it and I didn't, I didn't hear it. And I was like, what? Um, and I was like, what was that? Was that the show? But okay. Yeah. I thought that was a, that was a funny line. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, the whole vendetta against the GoBot was funny. And <laughs> he killed um, my, he, he, he killed, killed his cousin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, which is so funny too, because honestly, uh, for you listeners that are out there that are Marvel fans will know in the Marvel comics lore, Transformers was actually in consignment with Hasbro when they brought out the uh, Transformers line and like toys and then eventually became a cartoon and everything else. But they also did a comic book to work with it. Now, mind you, that IP has kind of subsided to IDW. They don't own that anymore. So... I, I think it's a Kevin Smith kind of thing, too, because how Kevin talked about GoBots and Transformers and Clerks 2, mm. and how the GoBots were the Kmart version of Transformers. <laughs> and I, I kind of passed this along to him in Twitter, but he didn't respond, but a lot of fans have. But I was like, wow, you were ahead of your time. Because apparently now Drax destroys GoBots. And mind you, they are the Kmart version of Transformers. <laughs> yeah. So the the one the heroes the, the heroes that we saw were were you know Gobot, uh, Ant Man, Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. uh, Captain America. Then what looked like the gold statue guy from Moon Knight. Yes. Yes. Uh, Con- and Conju? who else? Was it Conju? The no, 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 no. Oh, the Moon guy Knight? who actually was a statue. Within Moon Knight. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I I know who you're talking about now. Yeah, that Steven was talking to that he was just the the, basically the living statue. I don't remember what his name his his name was, but they didn't give him a name, yeah. Um but yeah, I was like, Oh, that guy looks familiar. Um, (laughs) and uh yeah, I I thought that was I mean, yeah, I've I've you see, you know, you go through Times Square or maybe over there in the theater where you'll just have at this point, it's they're dressing up like real heroes from the world, and you know, for us, or you know, they're just dressing up like comic book characters or mm-hmm. you know, movie yeah. movie characters. So, I thought that that was an an interesting and and fun and kind of interlude, and then a way for them to get some money so they could go drinking. Yeah, <laughs> I like the way uh, Mantis discovers money. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, so great. And she's great. holding it like this. Yes. <laughs> like like to her chest with it all flared out. And it's so funny, too, because it's a lot of money. And they paid for a lot of drinks. And she they could did. afford that map. <laughs> that was $40. Mind you, that is not joking. Those are 40 bucks now. Yeah, those things are. The, but I, I love the way. And that was the other thing. I was like, you know. Mantis is just a thief. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's just a thief because I mean it wasn't ba- it, it wasn't a uh, just good enough for like you know the map part like you know give me the map for free is like give me your money also. So <laughs> she, like Mantis basically mugged the yeah, store she, clerk. She basically <laughs> discovered what mugging was. And yeah, she's <laughs> like, oh, okay. Well, I have this power that's kind of like a gun, and I'm just gonna wheel it that way and, well she uh, did that with the cops too it's like oh sleep well, sleep sl- sleep sending right. cops to sleep is one thing basically saying hey give me all of your money for nothing <laughs> like, she's a thief yeah she's a thief <laughs> like i don't know that she understands the concept of like not using your powers like for good oh, or this evil is, this is the yeah. risk uh, yeah. of having powers is that like, is true uh you know i've never i've I lived on ego for you know all of my life until i met my effectively my family in the guardians but i've never had to interact with normal people before yeah so right basically she's, she's learned from her family because you got yeah. you know you got, you got rocket, rocket. <laughs> <laughs> who's a thief yeah. <laughs> so and of course you know drax being drax who just does whatever yeah. he wants yeah uh, so i'm sure she's getting a lot of influence from those things yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that was that was all I had. Uh, Rob, what you got? Actually, funny enough, I mean, one thing that I thought it was interesting was, well, first of all, steroid group. <laughs> oh, small group. Yeah. Okay, so, I was like, where, he's been hitting the he's been hitting the the gym. The gym. Yeah. <laughs> so at first, at first, I, I you know, interesting. At first, I thought, okay, it's a holiday special. They're already doing CG for a uh, rocket. They're already doing mm-hmm. CG for uh, Cosmo and everything else. Maybe Groot was a a kind of a physical effect. So I thought it was a man in a suit. But then as I watched. As I watched it over and over again, I was like, no, that seemed to have been animated too. So I'm yeah. wondering what the what the reason is for making him look that big. Because then the last time we saw him, he was just this rude teenager, you know, that uh, uh, was playing his uh, video games and, you know, was being nasty to everybody. He looked very thin. Yeah. Well, so, so initially I was like, is that like Hulk Groot? Groot cult? <laughs> But yeah, I thought that was that was definitely uh, you, you definitely done some done some working. Yeah, so I, I my thought is like, all right, so maybe what they're doing is they're trying to follow what I would say, you know, a child is, you know. So yeah, he was a, you know, just kind of a a shitty little teenager, kind of you know, sick kitty <laughs> right. kind of, and then now he's more of the uh, what is it, the college, uh, you, you know, college jock, jack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, something like that, you know, because that's how he was acting, you know, when he was uh, listening to music and stuff like that. He just looked very, uh, very college, uh, you know, type of person, <laughs> party guy. And uh, so I was like, at first, thought it was a practical effect. I really did. I thought it was a man in a suit. But then I started noticing, you know, the uh, the effects. And I was like, oh, wow. they. And again, I think this is something that they're going to probably mention in volume three. <laughs> Right. I mean, if I'd like to see, you know, Hulk Groot or bulked up Groot in, in <laughs> volume three, because we saw infantilized Groot in, you know, volume two and then teenage Groot in Infinity War. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah, that was my thing there. That and uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting was the physics of radio. <laughs> so when uh, when Kevin Bacon receives a phone call. <laughs> and he's like, how the hell am I receiving a phone call all the way out here? And he's like, oh, we have antennas that can reach 40 million light years. I'm like, isn't radio signal travels at the speed of light? So you're telling me that uh, it, like the, the the physics didn't make sense. I was like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I, I geeked out there for a bit. I went, uh, no, never mind. It's, it's, they got the science all wrong, but fine. <laughs> I mean, the, the doctor can make can make phones work throughout time. So, I mean, you know, okay. Well, <laughs> at least they're in the same time zone. Oh, sorry. Time line, time point in time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just, it, like I said, he, and it was instant. Like, Oh, hello. Oh, hello. I'm like, <laughs> that's a damn good phone service. man. <laughs> <laughs> what antenna do you have? Cause I need that. Yeah, really? Mark, what, what, what else you got? Not so much. You guys covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to next, or are we already already in notes? I think you guys were already in notes. Too. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I, 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 have to, I have to say that I have to credit Kevin Bacon for coming on to this. And, and I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, he, they basically turned him into a hero. Yeah. So now... Now he, you know, he's showing up and being hero worshipped. So, like, why wouldn't you do that? I have to credit him for for coming on. And then, and then when he's under the trance, he's and like, oh, he's an actor. You're repugnant. You're the worst. We hate you. And he's Be like, a man, hero, man. Uh, like I, I that would normally really bug me, but I'm totally into this right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was, Kind of makes really it kind of makes you wonder. It's like, okay, so I want to hear the story about why actors are so repugnant and stuff like that. You know, so right. that that, yeah, that's, that, a, that would be an interesting uh, topic there. You know, to know why they came up with that. You know, so I mean, I feel I, like it was like almost like fourth wall breaking. Like, hey, we got a bunch of actors talking about how shitty actors are, right? Um, <clears throat> and oh, that was funny. Yeah, and also the fact that they actually talk about his other stuff, how he did a dance-off, which Quill kind of embellished on and reflected in a kind of say, hey, uh, well, Quill did a dance-off 
and save the universe, and you did that in Footloose, and then, oh, but you also killed Jason Voorhees, and he's like, oh, I didn't kill Jason Voorhees, I was kind of stabbed with, like, a, a spear a, through uh, yeah. the neck, and I was dead. I and that didn't have Jason in it. <laughs> it's yeah, also, like, <laughs> also a character that I played. Yeah, um, yeah. And like, <laughs> oh my god, he's an actor. He didn't do any of those things. Yeah, exactly. And I thought that was pretty cool for the fact that they actually did bring up the Jason thing for Friday mm-hmm. the Thirteenth, the original, as well as Footloose, and then correlating it to the Guardians. So but I yeah. never put together. I never put together the whole dancing to save the universe. As in, like, a parallel to Footloose. Oh, to be really? Fair, I've also never seen Footloose, so... Oh, yeah. You gotta watch the original, not the remake. No, right. I mean, the Kevin Bacon version. Um, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, but uh, it just wasn't really my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so I had never put that together between, like, in the first in the first Guardians movie. I mm. like, oh, I'm gonna da- have a dance-off. I was like, oh, they're just doing a dance-off. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, but now it makes much more sense. All right. Well, Greg, you had put something in your notes too that I see, which is so fun to to look at too. The Kevin Bacon and Kira Cedric. Oh yeah. The, they... the, the the fact that like you had they're acting, you know, Kevin Bacon and Kira Cedric actually were in the movie. Like they were obviously Kevin Bacon, but then her the voice, voice is his on wife, his phone. Yeah, right. The voice of his wife, his real true life wife, uh, is. Kira, you know, for the the ten seconds that she was talking, I was like, oh, like I, it makes you wonder, uh, is are they actually like super happy like that? Like, hey, you know, we're we're uh, we're both actors. We make really good money, and yeah, you know, you're, they're they're coming back from New York. They to, actually to are Christmas. They actually are like that. Um, I met and them. That's once. awesome. Yeah, like, I that's... met them. I met them once, and um. And I, when I met him, she was also there, and they were just, you know. And then when you look at the, when I was seeing them from, you know, from afar, <laughs> you could say, um, they their interactions with each other just seemed that way. Like that's you know, awesome. Like, yeah, one of one of the few couples, like Hollywood couples, that have actually like really come to enjoy each other's company as opposed yes. to like, yeah the rest of it. I imagine Tom Hanks and his uh and his wife are the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I, I I really enjoyed their interactions, and then you know, hey, uh, I got some friends who uh, <laughs> who need to understand what Christmas is. Okay, <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like that might be a little bit stretching it a little bit, but uh, yeah, it was, it was. But it, I kind of wonder what that story. conversation is like when he gets back. It's yeah, like, yeah so where I were you? A, <laughs> I was abducted, and I, I was actually abducted jammed by out. aliens, <laughs> and then the argument starts. <laughs> and I I jammed out with aliens too, and I was playing, and I wish my brother was there for the Bacon Brothers band, and we could do <laughs> this whole song trilogy and do an EP. As Kara looks at him and goes, stop lying to me. Where were you? Yeah. <laughs> How much shrooms did you have? And where can I get some? You know? <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, we should move on to quotes. And I know you guys got a ton. You probably covered everything that I've already thought of. So uh, I'm going to let you guys go at it. <laughs> uh the first one I like is when Drax said, you know, when they were explaining uh, what they had to do. It's like, I hate stories where everyone lives. This story's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate stories where everyone lives. <laughs> and it's going back to what you were saying about Drax. It's just, he just doesn't have a filter at all. It's just, sh- no. shit, this shit just comes out of his mouth and you and you have to laugh. And it's great the the lines that, you know, they make him actually do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, well, that was that actually... Goes- that honestly goes back to the original Guardians film when Rocket says to Quill, he goes, dude, he's literal. His his people are literal about everything. There <laughs> is no in between. Yeah, it'll go. It'll it, whatever you say. It'll, if you use any kind of if you don't, if you're not talking literally, it'll go over his head. It won't yeah. go over my head. Too fast, I would catch it. Oh God! <laughs> God <shut up. laughs> I have mastered the art of standing still. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, standing, I'm moving so slowly, you can't see me, dude. I see you're eating a zargnut right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just the stuff he says, man. Just it kills me sometimes. 
because it's like you were saying at the, at first to me i hated i hated the character yeah i started liking him because i was like okay he's just this absurd stupid character that you just have to like you know yeah. unfortunately yeah. you know so yeah the uh let me see um <laughs> i did i did like quill's line yeah this is a, a christmas gift this is human trafficking you, give, <laughs> you brought me you bring what's what what do you give the guy who's got everything do you give him an actual person <laughs> no no that's yeah that not only trafficking is uh what is this slavery <laughs> yeah yeah uh, human uh trafficking yeah yep. that's what yeah. it was yeah <laughs> um when uh kevin bacon comes out of his trance hey rocket's like Hey, 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 nobody's gonna hurt you. It's okay. It's a, it's a talking wrecking. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> oh, right. And then like Groot like catches him as he goes flying towards Kevin Bacon. Which is a typical rocket thing, right. but the thing is exactly. is that he actually equated it properly, which is like he's a raccoon. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, it, it goes back to the again the like making sure that these characters got respected enough where you know they continue to be who they are in the other movies and it yeah. was great rocket just fucking going off i mean he just <laughs> he, i mean he was fast too i mean well, he didn't go off <laughs> on tony when uh, uh, tony stark called him a builder bear <laughs> <laughs> in end game he goes uh for a second i thought you were a builder bear he goes eh, yeah i wouldn't put it past you too <laughs> I was like, really? Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, you're you're right. They absolutely were like this. This whole like every character was absolutely true to to their character. Yeah. yeah. Um. And and I think that's one of the things that's most impressive about it. Like even with some character development, the 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 actions and f words and lines were yeah. still very true to what what we know the the characters as. Exactly. That, That's why yeah. I was saying that, you know, Mantis, even though she's just like this background character, they were able to bring more of her out, but mm -hmm. still remain true to what the character, I guess, is supposed to be. In, yeah, in absolutely. The MCU. So, yeah, very much like Nebula, very much like Cosmo. And I want to bring that up, too. That That's another note that I wanted to, because we got more of Cosmo within this. You got Rocket and Cosmo working together. And we got a female voice for Cosmo at this point, and they're trying to put together nowhere. And she was like, uh, I can't work under these conditions and how you're treating me. I, I will not work if you continue to, to demean me. I yeah. also want some of those delicious <laughs> treats in your bag. Yeah, and, and honestly, the one character missing, honestly, and I still miss it, is Howard the Duck. <laughs> And I wish uh, Kevin was able to, Kevin Smith was able to do that, which was like two or three years ago. They were supposed to do a whole Howard the Duck thing, but it never happened. Mm. So, but uh, at least we got a little bit more Cosmo. Well, we know that they have a female voice. Right. And it, and it works. Which I thought it was cute. I thought it was cute because um, yeah. Cosmo's supposed to be a, a male dog, I guess. In the uh, and yeah, I think he, I think he was a male dog also in the movies. They just retconned it to a female. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. so too. So, but I mean, no, or, that that was or the cool. voice or the voice modulator is just the female voice. It could be. It I mean, could be. Who yeah, knows? I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> when Mantis is talking to the cops after Drax flips the the, the car. Yeah, she she takes her candy cane and she's like, "I really want this, but I'm gonna give it to you." So that makes us even, right? We're not doing anything <laughs> wrong <laughs> by stealing this person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was a, that was a good one. That was good. I liked uh, when they were the Gobots killed his cousin, and he was about to just. And then in the end, you know, then you see him in the background just being the poor yeah, crap out of this poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was actually a cool uh, Gobots killed his cousin <laughs> and I like uh, actually Nebula had a great line and it was like Nebula had a great line and she had the uh, I guess the only uh, uh, curse word in the uh, in the whole yeah. thing was like all I guess all actors are not pieces of shit <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah. that was, that was she, says it, she says it with such a straight stoic face yeah and she, that's does. Like, that's like make, she says it to camera Right. Um, so that's why is, I feel like I like that's why I feel like I love that character because it's just 
it's a character that just doesn't take i don't know it, it, it takes itself too serious but in a funny way right? yeah yeah all right well that's our all our quotes right i think that's so. i think that's all i got all right, i like well. also mantis which says, i wish i would have bought uh, Groot. <laughs> <laughs> all right well next up is uh well comic news or uh actually mcu news or anything that's related to within the uh cinematic universe when it comes to comics so uh we got guardians of the galaxy part three trailer that came out just recently now mind you there's a lot of stuff that's really fun in it a lot of sadness and a lot of darkness too. Uh, yeah. But uh, honestly, I'm looking forward to it because uh, it kind of rounds rounds out what's going on within the cinematic universe of Marvel when it comes to the Guardians. So, uh, Rob, you've seen this too, and Greg, you've probably seen it as well. So, what were your thoughts? You know, I'm going to say that, again. This is it. It keeps it the same as like the other ones makes you excited for it and now that you have seen two other movies that were actually pretty good uh it makes me excited to see this one this is supposed to be an uh a movie from what i've read that is supposed to emotionally tug at your heart and it's gonna be and it's gonna be kind of they're gonna concentrate a lot more on rocket and his origin origin and, yeah and, you know where he can't came from and stuff like that so i think there's gonna be a lot of there's probably gonna be more scenes in there of him being genetically made or whatever it was that he was, you know, the way he, they made him, that's going to be kind of like tough, you know, like those tough little moments mm. in the movie, which I think it's great. So, but no, I'm actually looking forward to it. I think the, again, looks great. I'm sure they're going to have an awesome soundtrack to this movie. Like they do with the other two. Mm. So yeah. Um, I'm waiting it, for it, Peter to discover guns and roses. <laughs> Although they already did that in Love and Thunder, so I don't yeah, know. So I I think Greg, you and Rima Joe will be waiting for that moment when Peter well, Quill discovers. A Rima after Rima Love and Thunder, we in the, in the Z heads, we had a, a big discussion about it. And yeah, like, I know, <laughs> man. Like the Peter Peter should uh, he should definitely branch out to beyond you know mid eighties. Yeah, well, early <laughs> mid eighties because. Uh, Guns of Roses came out in 1986. Right. So, so uh, that was like just above the mid 80s at that point. Right. But yeah, I, I do look forward to it as well. Me, the fact that we do get uh, a Rocket prequel of how he came to be and how he was made. Plus his love interest too. Because if you do pause that actual trailer, you could see him. And another furry getting together at some point in love. Yeah, was that a ferret? Well, I mean, what is it? I mean, what, a what do we know what it is? <laughs> Who it knows? Looked like, it looked like a ferret or it looked like an otter, something like that. I, an I'm otter. Sure. I would I say more it, of an otter. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, my feeling is it's like uh, we get a little bit more, but it's going to tug at our heartstrings if, because if you listeners and viewers and fans know with the actual logo for guardians of the galaxy for every movie that has come out if you look at the first one it was brown that was Groot the second was blue and red that was Yondu the third was brown and yellow that can only highlight more than anything now, mind you, these are fan concepts and thoughts and ideas. Do I agree? To some degree. For the fact that I do believe that. Because they did tug at our heartstrings for every movie. We yeah. lost Groot in the first one. We lost Yondu in the second. I would not be surprised if we lose Rocket in the third. Well, if the Guardians continue on after that, we don't know. Right. That is going to be upon the remaining cast. We don't know if uh, Zoe will actually continue on as well as uh, Peter Quill himself. Chris, so, what, uh, so what happened to Gamora? Like past Gamora that was at the end she's of She's out there. She's still out there in the world. I mean, like in the with, galaxy. With Gamora gone. Like that's what Mantis was saying with Gamora gone. I'm like, 
What? Well, I guess Gamora. I mean, the the Gamora that was was with Quill. That one died, and that one died. Right. You know, sure. I mm-hmm. guess being in love with um with Quill. This is a Gamora that just hasn't gotten there yet. Yes. Right. So, right. So yeah. So I mean, she probably left or whatever it is. Or she, I mean, I, I would have figured that she would be with Nebula, who is her sister. That like right a yeah. version that isn't constantly trying to kill her. But yeah, those I thought it was odd to have her excluded. Although I have seen a couple of articles by Zoe Saldana talks about being kind of pigeonholed in that in that role. Hmm. hmm. That's interesting. I don't see her that way. But then again, I mean, it's a, it's a nice character. It's just. She, the, sure. y- y- you're right. I think there's, uh, there hasn't been enough development for her. I guess. I nah. mean, they, they've done some stuff with uh, Infinity War and uh, and stuff like that, but not, not something where, you know, goes further than that. Right. I guess, but who knows? I mean, Volume Three might actually tell us what why she's gone or you know what's going on there. Hmm. Yeah. Did they show? Did it? it so they showed somebody that was. Like you know, gold color. Adam. Had, Adam Warlock. Yeah, Warlock. That was, was, that was, do you think that's Adam Warlock? That is Adam Warlock. That is Adam Warlock. Okay. The question is: Is does he have the Soul Stone in his head? Because he has some kind of stone. Yes. So, but the, the question... thing, the question is: Is that the Soul Stone, like in the comics? Oh, because, wait, were all yeah, of the stones destroyed? They were. Oh, they were brought back. Be- by Steve Rogers, but the thing is, is the Soul Stone was something that was dropped off by, well, Steve couldn't even drop that off because it kind of got damaged because that is why Gamora was killed for. Is that the one that she was killed yeah, for? Yeah, that's one she was killed for. Right. right. So, I mean, I don't know. That That's something that they'll probably address because the, the, uh, the Infinity Stones had to go back in time at the point. Where at the they, point when they were taken. They were taken. So, technically, yes, all the, all the uh, stones are destroyed. Mm-hmm. Um, depending on... And it... Yeah. All, and they have to be all destroyed because this takes place after Infinity, you know. Yeah, Thanos destroyed all the... Yeah, the stones, right. So. This is all after Endgame at this point. Right. Yeah, I mean, who knows what that type of stone or what they're going to say I mean, about that stone? Uh, but I mean, to be fair, the I don't know whatever that race was called, whatever the gold people were, <laughs> like they had the pod at the end of Guardians Two, and you know she was talking about birthing her the the savior of her people or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. You wouldn't even necessarily need the Soul Stone, but I, I am interested to see. To see Adam Warlock. Yeah, same here. Wasn't Adam Warlock also uh, a disciple of um, of Galactus at one time? Or yes. am I? Or am I within I'm, the comics? Within, within the, the comics. comics. So yeah. yeah. But the thing is, this is basically the cinematic universe is its own entity at this point. No, of course. And it's how they're going to adapt it. Yeah. But my curiosity is the fact that they actually did have a stone in his head mm-hmm. on the theatrical trailer release. Correct. It makes me think, hold on, is this uh, some sort of uh, disturbance within the dimensional realms? Because we are going to get Deadpool, and he's going to go through time of all the different times, because he's bringing in Wolverine. And, you know, is this, uh, we know, we have an idea that, obviously, it's Deadpool kills the Fox Marvel cinematic universe at this point because he's just going to kill everybody. Well, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> Wanda kind of already did that. No, the Fox cinematic universe. No, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, I mean, but Wanda did that to Xavier. One. Xavier. One, in one, one universe. One, yeah, right. <laughs> in, in one, one of the many universes. I guess, the, right. animated, the animated version of Xavier, <laughs> I sure. should say. <laughs> well, no, he wasn't the He was the live version yeah, because was, they, he, there he was, was an the, animated, uh, what is it, an animated universe in Doctor Strange. Right. True. <laughs> so, uh, all right, all right, all right. It anyway. was one version <laughs> right. of Xavier. Yeah. We'll, we'll call it that. So uh, Patrick Stewart got his just dues kill within yeah. that particular. Well, it could be that uh, what what Kang? I mean, it could be that maybe he is an Adam Warlock from another universe. Because I mean, everything Ooh. everything is with Kang, 
Right. And which has now a mul- uh, the multiverse. Which is so. now is going into Secret Wars, which we all know. Okay. Who, know who knows? Uh, who knows? Who knows? Uh, yeah, there's. We still have to see because this was supposed to be the, like Phase Four was supposed to be the what are they called it the multi the multiverse. multiverse. Yeah, and I'm like, yep. okay, <laughs> went about it, guys went about it a little wrong, but but yeah, now now we're supposed to see, I guess, the outcome of yeah you know, Phase Five of all that. So uh, uh, eh, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll see we'll about see. that. Yeah, we'll see about that. So, but yeah, yeah. that that was a that's a that's a, that was an interesting uh, trailer. I, uh, when I saw it, I was like, I was excited about it. So, yeah. and same thing with Ant Man and the Wa and the Wasp Quantum Mania too. Yeah. Uh, right, we got we got a little bit of uh, Modok in there. Uh, we got definitely got Kang in there. Who's trying to uh, manipulate him? Right at that time. On top of that, with anything due with Lucas or Marvel, Spielberg, we got uh, Indiana Jones, too, uh, or not two, but uh, yeah. the, Indi- the uh, next Indiana, Indiana Jones five. movie, number yeah. five. Yeah. So that looks interesting. So yeah and, and and what's the uh is a, well, the title of it is what indiana jones i forgot uh and uh, in, in the cane of age or something i don't know i saw the title earlier and I, yeah I, same I, saw it too. Remember, I don't remember but, what it was but regardless it, it, it has harrison ford regardless and he uh is actually going to be thaddeus ross and they actually uh, yeah, that's right he took uh, over for he uh, took over from william, william hurt, hurt. And now we have actually a possible Red Hulk voice. So I think that's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, what else do you guys think about the trailer? I'm curious to see what it is. Uh, The woman that's involved within the actual next Indiana Jones movie is interesting in the sense that uh, is this an unknown daughter that he has? Because we already got, you know, we got the other guy from Transformers. Sheila Booth. Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Oh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So that's... Uh, so they're going to dial it back in time so he could go back to his previous life and say, don't have sex don't with this woman. Don't have sex with this woman. Oh, you can't have... <laughs> no, his name is Scud or whatever his name was. Oh, we can't have that. No. Scud? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, was, it wasn't Scud. It was... Uh... I forgot what it was, but I we already covered Scott. this. <laughs> <laughs> this was a bad man. That was a bad movie. Yes. Um, no, you and I, I did the the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I know. One. I'm trying, I, and I keep <laughs> look. Once I once I do a podcast, I mean, with the research I have to do it for a bad movie, I tried to now purge it out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, but yeah, no, it's nice to see. It's nice to see Harrison Ford back. It's nice to see. Yeah. Uh, I, I, they they showed a uh, Sala, which was great. So yes. that means that he's gonna, an older Sala too, right? An older Sala. So it's going to be interesting seeing him come back. Uh, I guess his, I guess the the person who's going to replace Indiana Jones, if they continue with the Indi- Indiana Jones, is uh, that girl from um, yeah from the Amazon show. I forgot what they called it. Um, her name is Phoebe's uh, Phoebe. What is it? Weller? Weller Bridge. I think so. Phoebe Wellerbridge. Okay. Yeah, so she comes out on uh, that show Fleabag on the on Amazon. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She was she's the one who wrote it and started it. Yeah. Right. So she's she seems to be like the takeover of huh. Harrison Ford hmm. because I guess that's supposed to be his uh, his niece or something like that. Ah. Is, you, you mentioned or, this, that you saw Sala. I mean, I haven't seen the trailer, but is John Reese Davies coming back? Yes, yeah. he is. Oh wow. Yeah, which is really cool. So I think it's amazing. No, I think it's great, and I'm glad that they're not bringing back Shia LaBeouf. They should retcon that entire movie. But yeah, the fact that maybe she's the one that's going to be now the new Indiana Jones, or maybe um, the adventurer within that universe. I'm I'm having a I'm having a, I'm going to have a hard time not like waiting for her to talk to the camera in flu <laughs> like she did in Fleabag. <laughs> <laughs> I never seen uh, Fleabag, so I, I know she breaks. Yeah, she breaks the third wall a lot, but yeah, it's she's it's good. I mean, at least I, I saw the thing. I watched the first season. Um, it's good. It's again people making poor choices. Uh, right. And 
than being basically just totally down on themselves, but in the funny way. Right. So, and then this will be, of course, uh, Steven Spielberg's first time not directing any of these movies. So James Mangold directing, uh, which I think hopefully uh, he does a good job. <laughs> uh, well, you said James Mangold. Correct. All right. Same person who did Logan. And Logan was phenomenal. Yeah. So, yeah, no, Logan was uh, absolutely amazing. So. Yeah, no, I I hope and he actually did a uh, Ford versus Ferrari too. Yep, which was great. Mm -hmm. uh, but he did do the Wolverine. <laughs> yes, he did the Wolverine, but he made up for it with Logan. He did, he did, definitely did, and uh, he also uh, uh, did a uh, Walk the Line. So he's done some great stuff out there. Yeah, Copland. Um, so Girl Interrupted storylines and everything else. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did do well. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. So uh, we have a lot to look forward to in the near future when it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as well as within the Indiana Jones universe for the fact that, you know, now Harrison Ford is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I'm just going to, I'm going to bring it up. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys saw the, the trailer for Shazam 2 or whatever it's called. I did. That was actually decent for DC. And uh Well, when it comes to Shazam, it was amazing. When it comes to Black Adam, that was oh, oh, oh. I didn't yeah. I mean, I'm like I'm like an hour into into Black Adam. I haven't finished it yet. All right. So all right, Greg. You, you we, will we see could, you we will could see do, all the poor choices that they made. We, we could do a whole podcast about that later on if we want, about Black Adam. <laughs> There are things that I do like about it, and just like with Rob, I do agree with what his respects of what we didn't like, but I think it came halfway of what it should have been. Right. Mm. And honestly... I have, I have so much to say about Black Adam, but keep exactly. going. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is not a Black Adam commentary yeah, exactly. at this point, <laughs> but we will talk about that at a later point, because a lot of people at this point We'll be able to see it on digital download or watch it. So we could do that at a later time if you want. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, Shazam looks promising in a sense. Uh, the Flash, apparently, about, there's a lot of re-edits that are going on, that are going about, that we don't know about. I'm wondering if they're going to take out this guy. Um, Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller out of there. I don't think so. I think they're going to release it as is. And then come with a rebuttal ending to change it to a different uh, flash at, at the end. But that's just my theory and thought and how they could actually segue away they, from that. They kill him off. They kill him off like in you know in or create a different <laughs> flash. That, yeah. That's all it is. And on top of that, they could come up with a different Batman because we're not get bat getting Batfleck, who what I would love, but. You know the DC. I hear, I hear now Ben Affleck is uh, changing his tune on uh, playing uh, the Batman. Like there's there's rumors of him now playing Batman in other, you know, or appearing in other yeah, things. It, so I'd I'd be interested in seeing that, but I'm hearing more about Keaton coming back in the forefront. Right. Maybe more for like a Batman Beyond. Uh, well, that's the only way because I mean, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't think Kevin Conroy's coming back, but you know, I I love Kevin Conroy. That but will be an awesome trick to see that. Yeah, it would yeah. be, but we miss him, and uh, that is one of the things that we will be missing now, and I am missing. We had to say goodbye to the one and only Mr. Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman, who is in the Batman the animated series. But honestly, I, I'm thinking that if we do get a Batman Beyond, it will be Michael Keaton. Uh, if we get another or continuing Batman, it most likely will either A, B, Ben Affleck, or Robert Pattinson. And uh, I don't depends. think Robert Pattinson will actually continue that. But if they throw a lot of money towards Affleck, I think Batfleck will actually cater to it and pay tribute to it right well remember he also left because of i think the way uh they were getting away, they were getting in the way of like the creative part of it and and his life and his life changing so hopefully right. he will come back to it which i will embrace 
But with that, that, that's a bit for the news, because we con, kind of went a little bit overzealous with this. Right. Uh, oh, by the, the way, the trailer to Transformers uh, Beast Wars or whatever came out. So I don't know if you've seen that, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, I did. Uh, I'll, I'll look at that again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right. Well, obviously, we didn't put anything in on our Facebook page about sending in feedback but if you do have any feedback this is where we could be found so all you have to do is go to our website panels to pixels podcast.com and there you could find links one link definitely the the facebook group which would be www.facebook.com slash panels to pixels you could also find us on twitter at panels to pixels that's at panels and the number two pixels you could email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com panels two spelled out to pixels and the number one at gmail.com you just write out a regular email if you want with your thoughts or you just record yourself and send it as an attachment and we'll actually you know play it on the podcast as we're uh, taking commentary uh, obviously we didn't get any right now because i didn't really you know post anything but uh, you could actually post something or send it out to us and we'll play it later. Uh, we could be found on YouTube and all you have to do is go into your search on YouTube and put in panels to pixels podcast. And if you're there, just give us a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that star button, whatever. They love doing all that stuff, but honestly, a lot of people do listen to the podcast as it is. We got an image you hear the podcast as it is, and it's played th throughout your sound system or your phone. We could be found on Instagram at panels two pixels podcast. So that's panels two spelled out to pixels podcast, and then you just find us out there. I'm sure Steve will post uh, some sort of image for particular episodes, and you just follow that. And we also want to encourage everybody else to check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. All you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com. Just follow all the other podcasts that are out there. You can find them in all your other search engines, uh, the, whether it be Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, whatever podcast player choice that you're using. So uh, with this... Where else can listeners hear you? So, uh, Rob? Uh, yeah, so uh, you guys can listen to me on, on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, where we cover movies that are um, not the greatest out there, big tempo movies that were, uh, were supposed to be overhyped and did not make it in the box office or critically. And we also do our top five uh, movie drafts, depending on you know whether it's actor, director, or genre itself. So a lot of fun. We are going to go into a probably like a, a little bit of a hiatus after our next episode uh, to end the first season and then uh, come back with season two uh, with probably even more uh, uh, guests I, I might have on there. All right, cool. And Greg, you've been on Podcast Network? Uh, yeah, on past Podcast Network, um, I hosted She Hulk with you know, our friend Penny. And so if you've had neither an accompanying podcast as She Hulk, check us out. Mm hmm at she hulk cast and then upcoming uh when the new wheel of time season comes out we'll be covering that over on podcastica as well awesome and as always you could do also hear me on adrenaline cinema podcast uh, i have like uh, a ton of different people coming on uh obviously greg's been on rob's been on and uh, we've covered anything that's action adventure fantasy anything that gets your adrenaline going thriller suspense films anything and uh you could check us out there that's adrenaline cinema podcast you can find us out there on the Pyrocore entertainment podcast so uh pyrocoreentertainment.com is the place to find all those uh particular podcasts so with that uh this is our coverage for the guardians of the galaxy holiday special from disney plus so i am mark I am Groot. <laughs> no, I'm Rob. And I am Greg. 
<laughs> All right. Well, same podcast, different pixel, different panel. This was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.